Thank you for joining us, Phil. Can you okay. please start with opening remarks? Yeah, afternoon, guys. Uh, I think I think it's important at the start of the press conference when, in terms of my opening remarks, that we just probably revisit the last two or three days in terms of the happenings, uh, because I, you know, I really want to move on from it and I want to nip it in the bud now in terms of sort of like my feelings and and, and the dialogues that I've been having with uh, with the MLS and the referees. So ultimately. Uh, you know, after 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 the game on Saturday, obviously I said the things that I said uh, in the emotions of losing and a really important game. In in terms of the feelings of the last two or three games, probably feeling a little bit hard done by by a couple of decisions that didn't go our way, uh, and ultimately used probably. A, a, the wrong terminology described probably how I felt. Uh, you know, I've been really supportive of referees in uh, since I came to the uh, the MLS. Since I became a manager, I've always wanted to be the type of manager that always tried to support uh, ultimately a human being in trying to do the best job that he or she can do. And I think I've tried to do that. But ultimately, on Saturday and Saturday, I praised the referee for the job that she did. I thought she was really good in the game. But ultimately, I felt hard done by and tried to stick up for my team and the club. And I used the wrong word in terms of the word cheat, uh, which, which should never be used, I don't think, towards officials or in games of football. So I've, I've had really good dialogue with both the MLS and the pro referees in terms of the decisions, in terms of my behaviour, in terms of the, the word used, and in terms of sort of like the respect that's needed from both sides, from me to them, and, and obviously... Uh, my assurance that this this was just a one-off, uh, but ultimately they understood. But ultimately, we uh, we had some really good dialogue in terms of sort of like moving forward, relationships moving forward, uh, and and the work that's being done in this league. I think I think what we what we're trying to do in this football league, and I say we because I feel part of this league, is that. We want to make it the best in the world, and and that was the conversations that we've been having. How can we keep improving? Referees, they are technical, tactical, whatever it is. And uh, I came out of those conversations uh, as a young coach and a young manager, uh, having learnt an awful lot. And 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 you know, I think I think when you're young, you you're a little bit uh, a little bit sort of like uh, you do shoot from the hip sometimes. And maybe on Saturday, I did do that. And uh, you know, it was a big learning curve for me in terms of the choice of words that I use. So I think in terms of uh, anything else on that matter, I look forward to the game on Saturday. Uh, <clears throat> it's another massive cup final for us. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've got some players back in training, albeit not 100%. Uh, Victor Yajoa trained today for the first time fully with the team. Uh, as you see today, we had a lot of the young boys training with us uh, because we have to prepare for any eventuality. At this moment in time, there's there's no plan to use the hardship rule. Uh, but ultimately, Breck Shea was out with a little bit of a back strain for two or three days this week. We've rested him again today and he's done uh, a recovery session. So we're going to probably take it right up to 8 o'clock tomorrow night before we know the full extent of the fitness because ultimately we don't want to take any risk with any of our players and I think the league have been really understanding of our situation uh, and last week I made Babika came in did a, did a fantastic job at centre back uh, and we've got other young players that are on standby just in case we need them and uh, we're going to into a game against a team that I think uh, come back into form against a team that's you know, looking at the game last night it's got an incredible stadium and, and when you move into a new stadium I think it, there's always that period of uh, settling in uh, and I think they've probably had that this year but the stadium looks fantastic they've got their players some of their players back from international duty injuries that they didn't have when we played them here when, when we beat them uh, three or four weeks ago so I, I expect to play a team that's better than what we did two or three weeks ago even though they were they were fantastic against us that night as well so and they've won a, a couple of games and are fighting at the same uh, in the fa same phase as us to try and qualify for the playoffs. Uh, in terms of other ones that I've missed, Christian McCoon uh, plays is involved for Venezuela tonight at eight o'clock in Chile. Uh, I think I think uh, in terms of his route back to Columbus is he's going to pick up an awful lot of air miles and a lot of stoppages and a, a lot of Starbucks uh, along the way. Uh, so we're going to have to assess that today whether it's worth whether it's possible 
whether it's physically possible to get him back to Columbus. And like I say, if he plays tonight, there's probably no chance of him being involved on Saturday because of the uh, because of the 24 hours, 48 hours in between games and the and the the 21 hours of travel. So. Uh, that's where we're at in terms of uh, maybe that's it. The press conference over, really. Yeah, no, I said everything. <laughs> we we'll get started with questions, and I believe Macoon is going to get Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts, sorry. Thank you, Rafa. <laughs> <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. He's going to stop at every Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> have a Heineken then. Eh? <laughs> that was a joke. That was. Just, he's not going to have a Heineken. I don't think. Okay, ready. Lauren. <laughs> ready. A uh, crucial match this weekend. How is the team physically and mentally preparing for this away trip? Well, f- well physically, we've we've uh, we've had to protect uh, the, the whole of the team this week. Uh, you know, the, the training's been a little bit shorter, been sharper, but a bit shorter because we are we are down to the bare bones, and uh, we've got three games next week, three the week after. So you think these next five games? At this stage of the season, fitness is not an issue. If you're not fit now, you're never going to be fit. So it's ultimately it's about mental freshness. And uh, the players, the players suffered a lot on Saturday. Mentally, they that it hurt them a lot because I think they knew the importance and size of the game in terms of where we wanted to get to. So we've we, we've had to work really hard on the mental side, keeping things fresh and sharp and and, and positive, and and making them believe that there is still a chance. That's my job. That's the staff's job. That's the club's uh, job until until it's mathematically not possible. And and what 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 we've experienced in this league this year that it'll only take one result, one result to flip. And and this team is streaky. This team can go on five. This team can get five five wins on the bounce. We've we, we've seen it. We've done it uh, nearly. So this team can flip it. And I and I do feel as if we're close to that flip in the last two or three games. So uh, we've got to keep believing. And we've got to keep that positive mentality. Next question, Franco, and then we'll go to Michelle on the call. Hey, Phil, <clears throat> if I could just ask you two quick ones. One on just Kieran and, and Nico, what's what's the latest on them? They weren't out there today either. Um, and then just uh, in terms of the attack, I know it, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it is a storyline with this team, the, the lack of goals and the attack struggling. Uh, what have you seen from... Gonzalo Iguain and Robbie Robinson up top um, that you've liked, that you liked as a tandem. Obviously, the goals haven't come in abundance as of late, but you've stuck with them by and large. So what have you seen from them that you've liked uh, as the forward pairing? Thank you. Well, I think... Uh, uh, Figal, yeah, sorry, uh, Gibbs and Figal. Sorry, sorry, Franco. Sorry. Uh, Kieran uh, is... But they're both taking longer than what we thought, uh, you know... Grade one is probably seven to fourteen days, so we're probably at that point now where we probably expected them back or near as damage. So we're hoping for uh, next Wednesday's game for both of them, but they need to be in training by Sunday, Monday to do that because they've missed the last uh, ten days. So uh, we're at the point in the season where where we can we can take the odd risk with with a little bit of tightness here and there because we obviously we're at the end of the season and we're we're at the games are that important and I hope the players. I've got the mindset of, of going through that little bit of uh, tightness and, and not feeling 100%. Because at this stage of the season, you're not going to feel 100%. Uh, and, and you've got to be mentally durable to get through these points. So that's what I'm hoping from Nico and Kieran, is that, is that the season is still there to play for and I want them back in the team as quick as possible. And that's, that's the message that they've got. Uh, in terms of the attack, I think, I think what, what, I've, what I've looked at and it's probably probably a two year thing now since since, since the club formed uh, about the number of chances that this team's created, the number of goals that people have scored, the number of assists that people have had, has been very minimal over the last two years, not just this year. And I think there's been a pattern this year that was last year. So ultimately, something has to change. Personnel, players, style, tactics, whatever it is, something has to change because we looked at the list of uh, assists from players, goals from players. Uh, second phase opportunities from players and it's nowhere near at the level that it should be so so over the next five or six games them stats need to improve because players are playing for their future uh, and players are playing for the place for next season so uh, and, and apart from Gonzalo who is the standout we need to support Gonzalo better we need to give him we need to make sure that his 10 goals and seven, 7 or 8 assists or whatever it is maybe less a little bit 
he's doubled by somebody else, he's matched by somebody else, and then he's got near to by somebody else. And I, and I look at the players around him and think, you know, who's going to give us that best opportunity to score goals? And, and ultimately, at this moment in time, we need to score goals. And I see Robbie at this moment in time as the player at this moment in time that probably provides and gets the best, creates the best opportunities against Portland, Atlanta, uh, against uh, Red Bulls, he created. I said created. He, he found himself in, in positions to score, and and we need we need goals in the team, not just from Gonzalo. Take Gonzalo's goals out of the team. This team would be bottom of the league by by a long way. So so we can't have one man just carrying the hopes of this whole football club. That's a big ask, even for somebody like Gonzalo Higuain. So I've been really disappointed with this, with, the, with the return of 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 key things that make attacking players attacking players because because defenders get paid to defend and that's why they get less than attackers because attackers get paid to produce the best moments the special moments the moments that you can't give or teach and ultimately this year our attacking players haven't produced those moments and uh what i would say on top of that another layer is is that 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 when we when we have a corner or a wide free kick the delivery has to be better. The attacking, the attacking and belief of somebody to get in the box and want to score. Because ultimately, uh, when when you are in a box, there is only one ball, and it's the player that the player that attacks the ball or heads the ball is the player that wants to wants to go and head it more than somebody else. And that's regardless of size or or position. That's that's a that's a desire to go and attack the ball. And I'd say that those are two, two or three main things that we've been working on this week. And the players are under no illusions that that this has to change very fast or else or else decisions have to be made next question Michelle hi Phil sorry to have to be a zoombie today but hi, I'm a zoombie today um, uh, I wanted to ask you you mentioned the other night that you know it wasn't just you that was upset about the calls that the players were very upset and they felt that you know they felt that the team was not treated fairly and all that I'm just wondering, uh, have you spoken with the team since your meetings uh, with the league and you know what, what have you shared with them and do you feel like that topic is finished now with the players that they're going to go into this next game feeling that from here on out the last six games everything with the refs is okay? Well, I, th I think the biggest challenge for us now is, is one, to not use that as an excuse, two, not to be sidetracked by that and have that approach of going into the game thinking those things. And that's that's something that I'm going to address with the team tomorrow and Saturday is that ultimately, ultimately we're talking about a decision last Saturday that sparked the emotion. So ultimately there's 38 games in a season and... And like like we discussed with Howard Webb the other day, you, you know, there's that age old saying that hopefully during the season it balances itself out. You get the good ones, you get the bad ones, and over a season you hope that it just balances itself out. So discipline is going to be a big, big, big thing on Saturday in terms of a mental approach to a game to make sure that we're ready to compete, ready to go to battle, ready to play well, uh, regardless of regardless of any overspill from last Saturday. Follow. Do you worry that players will have that in their mind and like play more timid or be afraid to be more aggressive because of all this or no? No, no. I, I expect that I expect the best behaviour from my players, and I think they did behave under under the circumstances last week. Uh, you know, with the goal being disallowed, them being given, them being disallowed. I think that that that's a massive emotional emotional turn in the space of 30 to 45 seconds so and I think under the circumstances the the they behaved themselves really well and I was really proud of the way that they behaved themselves and at the end of the game they didn't they didn't approach the referee they they were really in control of themselves and I, I expect the same on Saturday we'll do the last two questions died on and then finish with Chris on the call thank you Rafa Phil, uh, how are you approaching this match against Columbus Crew, considering the fact that it's not the same Columbus Crew that you uh, beat some weeks uh, ago? Like this Columbus Crew has uh, gained some confidence. Yeah. They has gained uh, some of their players too that they were yeah. out for for injuries. Yeah, they, they've they've got some of their best players back. Uh, they've got some victories that I think when we played them last time they were coming off the back of maybe six defeats. Maybe yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and they had maybe eight players out. Mensa couldn't play because I think he was uh, in quarantine. So uh, they've got all those players back now, and then they've they've won a few games. They've won a trophy. Uh, 
uh, which breeds confidence and belief. And I think I think what we've seen this season, once you flip it, you can then start going on a real positive run. I know they lost the last game against Philadelphia, but ultimately, I think they're a team that have got better confidence now than what we what what we played against them. Uh, they're a championship winning team. You know, 12, 12 months ago, less. They won a championship. They were the best team in the whole of the East and West Conference. So, uh, with a championship winning coach who's won it before in, with another club. So, we're not underestimating the size of the task. I, I, like I said, after that game, I thought we were fortunate probably to win the game against them. We rolled our luck. They had a lot of uh, control without really creating that many chances in that in that first game that we played against them. Uh, so, we know, we know it's going to be a tough game. Uh, we know that the, the the arena we're going to go to is going to be really impressive. It's a good atmosphere there. Uh, I would say that Columbus is 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 a place where I've got. It was the place where I I managed my first ever game in management uh, for the England uh, women's team. So it's a place I'm excited to go back with a couple of my staff that are with me uh, because it brings back great memories. But the memories uh, of the old stadium are now different than the memories in the new stadium. So uh, looking forward to it. Last question, Chris. Hi, Phil. Uh, Chris Smith from The Guardian here. Um, I just wanted to ask a more general question, really. Um, we're coming up to the end of your first season in charge of Miami. How are you feeling about it overall? Is it what you expected? Are you enjoying it? And is the team progressing in the way that you'd like? Well, I think uh, it's flown by, I've got to say. The last eight months have flown by. I've, I've uh, immersed myself in, in this football club. Uh, we, we, we've had a lot, you know. We came in during pre-season. There was a, there was a big turnaround, you know, eight nine players in the squad, uh, a new sporting director, uh, new new hopes, new aims, uh, but with with a massive massive project still to do. So I think I think this season has been from day one. I thought it was always going to be a little bit of a roller coaster. I, I thought that you know it was going to take time to get things how we wanted, and then we 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 seem to turn a corner. I think there's one, two defeats in 13 where I think I, I just thought we were just beginning to get some consistency and it's consistency that I was looking for, consistency in performance, consistency in behaviours, consistency in everything uh, and, and then it, and then, and then we've, it's just gone the other way again and, and it was a sharp reminder of the amount of work that's still left to be done. Have I enjoyed it? I, I, I've, it's, it's been an incredible experience so far. Uh, you learn, you learn so much. It's, it's without doubt the toughest league in the world to win, uh, and I'll say that again because of the, the 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 equalness of every team in both conferences, with the budgets being the same apart from the DP budget. So ultimately, uh, it is one of the hardest leagues to win with the travel and the climates and and everything that goes with it. But every every away ground I've been to. There's been fantastic stadiums. Every coach I've been up against uh, tactically have been really good. The players and, and the physicality of the league, the technical ability of the league has, has been really, really good. So, uh, yes, I'm enjoying it. Uh, yes, I think we can still get better. Yes, I think there's still massive rooms for improvement. Uh, and, and ultimately, we, we, we need to keep we need to keep the graph going upwards uh, and turning and turning around uh, the, these defeats at this moment in time. Get some positivity back in the club uh, and get get this club consistent in their performances. And I think that's what me and Chris Henderson want to do. We want to get some consistent performances, a consistent roster, uh, lower the age of the roster to make sure we've got good, young, hungry players because I think it's a young person's league, this, uh, this MLS. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was a, it was seen as a retirement league. Now it's definitely a young person's league with some of the best young players coming through the academies now that have been developed over the last five to 10 years. Uh, and we're a club that want to produce our own players as well, and we've give uh, debuts to, uh, you know, some of our academy players. So I'd say it's been an up and down year with a massive, massive room for improvement, both both on and off the pitch. Thank you, Phil. Thank you.